In this video, we'll talk about one more application of integrals, and that's to the average value of functions. So one replication of integrals, as that we'll get to, is finding the average value of a function. So let's start with an initial statement. So what is the average value of a set of numbers? Well, how do we average numbers? Well, we add them up and then divide by however many numbers we had. So if I have numbers, so I have five numbers a1 through an, their average should be just adding them up and then dividing by n. So that's that. What about for a function? Well, for a function, we don't really have numbers we can add up because a function is defined everywhere and it's, we can't really add up over real numbers in the normal sense. We can, based on what we were talking about before in this section, adding things up is sort of similar to doing integration. Right? Integration is kind of adding up all these little pieces and giving you a result at the end of it. So we use integrals to also talk about average values of functions beyond where a sum will talk about the average values of numbers. So if f is an integrable function on an interval from a to b, its average value is this formula here, 1 over b minus a times the integral from a to b of f of x. And if you look at it, this is pretty similar to the formula we have for averages of numbers, right? I'm adding up f on this interval, like adding up the set of numbers, and then dividing by how big the interval is or how many numbers that I have. So I integrate from a to b, and I divide by the length of the interval, b minus a. And that's what we've defined as the average value of this function on this domain. So why is this an average value? Well, one way you can think about this average value is the fact that it also satisfies the following relation. So the average value of f times b minus a is the same as the integral over the domain, right? That's just the expression for average value when I move the b minus a to the other side. So the point here is this here is the area of a rectangle, and this here is the area under the graph of f. So what the average value really does is it finds the height whose rectangle over the interval b minus a has the same area as the area under the function f on that same interval. So in some sense, it's like the average height of the function f on this interval. It really wouldn't have a way to do it any other way, but this tells what the average height is in the sense of a rectangle of that height has the same area contained in it as the function f does on this domain. It turns out this is also useful in several other um, instances as well, beyond just the fact this is a nice definition to have. And one of those is another theorem that is sort of, you've seen the name before, but not in this context. And that's the mean value theorem for integrals. I'll write it out for you and then we'll talk about what it sort of means and how it relates to things you already know from before. All right, so here's our statement here. If f is a continuous function on the interval from a to b, there is a point c between a and b, so that f of c equals the average value of f on that interval. And you can think of this sort of in a couple different ways. One is sort of via the intermediate value theorem. So this average value should be the average height of the function, right? And if the function is continuous, the average height has to be somewhere sort of where the function gets to, right? So if the average height doesn't get hit, then the function has to jump over its head and not be continuous. Another way to think about this is via the mean value theorem from derivatives that we had way back in Calc 1. And the idea there is if I apply the mean value theorem to the antiderivative of little f, I get exactly this statement here. And why is that? Well, if I imply this to the antiderivative of little f, on the right-hand side here, the integral is f of b minus f of a, and since f is the little f is the derivative of big F, this here is f prime at c. The mean value theorem applied to that function capital F gives me this statement here as well, but it's also expressed in this form for just integrable functions, just continuous functions, as the mean value theorem for integrals. That's also why it's called the mean value theorem for integrals, because it really comes directly from the mean value theorem for derivatives that we had back in Calc 1. All right, so now a brief example. Find the average value of the function f of x equals x squared minus 2 on the interval from 0 to 3. This is just a straightforward calculation here. The average value should be 1 over 3 minus 0, the integral from 0 to 3, x squared minus 2 dx. Just plugging right into the form for what it means to be the average value of this function. We can then find the antiderivatives and then plug in our endpoints. And that comes out to 1 on this interval. So that's the idea, that's how you find the average value of functions, and that's sort of what the mean value theorem for integrals is and how it relates to this idea of adding things up and combining things together using integrals to help solve problems.